Hi everybody, uh, as you can see everything is here for the new computer build. Uh, it came quite quickly actually, I thought it would take a week or so for everything to get here but it's only taken four or five days or so. Um, you can see all the parts here. Uh, I promised to go through everything and why I, uh, why I picked all the parts uh, specifically and I'll do that now. Um, just to warn you, this is probably going to be a pretty long video because I might do this video as well as the build video in one so I'll go over everything and then I'll start building it and I've not really done this before so it, it's probably going to take a long time and it might go on a bit so just just to warn you if you if you want to see the whole thing you could skip through past this bit to the build or there's a fly in here um, you could skip through and you could just watch the parts you want to or go right to the end when it's finished and hopefully everything will be working uh, but otherwise stick around and we'll start getting into some of the parts and why I picked them. Okay then, here is a close-up of everything and I'll just get straight into it. I'll start on the right side here with the power supply. This is the Aerocool uh, Templarius Imperator 750 watts power supply. Uh, it's partially modular. Um, I picked this mainly, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I did pick it mainly because it's white. And I'm going for a kind of a white build. Most of the things should be uh, work well with white. Um, I have a few other different colours in it, but the, the general theme is white. Uh, and to be honest, yeah, that's why I bought this. Um, 750 watts should be more than enough for what I'm operating. I'm only using one graphics card. Uh, quite a power hungry one at that, but 750 should be fine for that. Um, and to be honest, I also picked this because it is nice and efficient. It's 80 plus silver rated, which is pretty efficient. Uh, like I said, you know, you buy the cheap ones that aren't efficient at all and they break down on you and can damage uh, the rest of your parts, which obviously is not good. So better to buy one that is 80 plus rated. Uh, if, if, for example, you're ever buying one, look for that specifically. Uh, they do bronze, silver, gold, platinum and titanium I think, but if it has any rating that's 80 plus, that's pretty good. Right, moving on, behind that we've got the motherboard. This is the Gigabyte Z87X D3H motherboard, uh, 1150 socket for Intel's Haswell series, their fourth generation Haswell processors, that's what I'm using. Uh, I picked this board mainly because of the price point for performance, so it's a very good board, it has the, the Z87 chipset rather than the uh, H87 or the B87 chipsets that uh, some of the lower end boards have. And with this you get lots of cool things with the new Haswell platform. So we've got the Ultra Durable 5 Plus here, so you get all, all ultra durable, ultra things about this motherboard, so it's ultra cool, ultra performance, ultra safe with a dual BIOS which would be pretty good. Uh, I've always had really old uh, basic biases on the other on the other computer, so this should be interesting to use. And lots of USB 3.0 ports, so 10 ports all together, uh, depending on how many you have on the front of your case. And there's a few on the back of here, and two uh, ports on the actual board themselves for USB 3, which is pretty good. And it being Z87 as well, there's all SATA 6 gig uh, ports, which should be very good when I'm using my SSD. should give nice quick speeds, which is very useful for my video editing. I need, uh, I need to be loading things in very quickly. Right at the back here, um, I'll not move it out of the way, but you can see there, is the uh, monitor. It's an AOC i2-757FM. It's a 27-inch monitor. It's pretty huge. It's actually bigger than the, the TV we have in the living room, but uh, I wanted to go bigger because I thought, you know, it's going to be useful for my video editing. The bigger, the better. You can see more detail. Uh, it's also an IPS monitor, so it should be nice and bright. It's uh, full HD, uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, I did look at a 2560 by 1440 monitor or a 4K monitor, however, they are still very expensive. You don't seem to be able to 4K monitor for under £400, so that was way out of what I could spend. I know everything here seems very expensive and, and sort of high end, but uh, well, it is, it is, but the monitor, the monitor uh, had to be slightly cheaper because I simply couldn't afford a 4K monitor, not a chance. So that should be pretty good. Uh, moving on, uh, down here we have a copy of Windows 7 Professional. This is an OEM version. Uh, a lot of people might say, why didn't you go for Windows 8? Well, I've never used Windows 8. I don't really want to particularly. I don't see 
the benefit. I know it has ridiculously fast boot times with an SSD, but I'm used to the Windows Vista slash Windows 7 interface, the old interface of Windows, and I think it will be perfectly adequate for what I need. And I suppose if, if I needed to upgrade, I could just get a copy of Windows 8, but I don't think I will, so this will uh, do fine for me. Uh, behind that, at the top here, we've got my SSD, my primary drive for all my operating system and programs. It's a Kingston HyperX 3K, uh, 240 gig SSD. You can see going for the white again, the white and black. This was a limited edition one. It's usually grey and uh, grey and black, I think. So this should look pretty nice in the case. I might uh, mount it somewhere where you can see it well. So this is going to be a huge boost in performance from my original hard drive and the other computer. Especially for my video editing, you know, this should fix the lag and this should fix the jumpy frames, which uh, is going to be such a relief. So this is going to be great. Uh, behind that, we have the CPU cooler. Uh, I'm not going to use the stock cooler because I do plan to overclock the processor. This is a Corsair H60 uh, water cooler. Um, I was considering an air cooler and I know that there isn't that much of a boost in temperature uh, change going up to a water cooler. However, it wasn't really that expensive. Uh, it's one of the cheaper Corsair coolers. I know they do ones with 240 mil radiators. This is a 120 mil radiator. But I'm sure it will be perfectly suitable for my needs. So, uh, so yeah, it was uh, it was a good buy, and uh, like I said, not too expensive, which was which was good. Uh, next, uh, well, I'll move on. These cables down here, you can see. This is just me being a bit sort of anal about the color scheme. Now, the uh, power supply does have sleep black sleeved cables, but you can see all the individual wires in there, yellow and red and green and blue and all that. And I'm just being a bit paranoid, not paranoid, but over uh, over the top about it. So I bought some custom sleeve cables. Uh, they weren't very expensive and I've heard some good reviews about them. So these will come out into the front. I'll keep all the, the nasty looking cables in the back behind the motherboard tray. So there's a couple of six pin uh, connectors for the graphics card. There's a 24 pin for the motherboard, an eight pin supplemental for the motherboard. Uh, some SATA ports and one extra SATA port that I'm going to need for the DVD drive, uh, I think. But um, yes, they should look nice in the case, I hope. Uh, behind that, got the RAM. Again, gone for white. This is Kingston HyperX Fury, uh, 16 gigs, running at 1600 megahertz. This should be a good upgrade again from the RAM I was using in the drive uh, I'm running now, the computer, sorry, I'm running now. That's only 1333, so this should be a bit faster. And with the extra, well, twice as much capacity, uh, it should be able to run my video editing much better and I should be able to load a lot more onto the RAM without slowing things down. So that's going to be great. I know when I have been uh, rendering some videos lately, the RAM goes right up to about 7.5 gigabytes. Uh, and I'm sure with more, it will be able to load more and it would run smoother. So that's going to be good. Behind that, just got a couple of fans. These are the Corsair SP120s. Uh, I'll bring these in. I can change the focus actually on this and focus on the fans. Uh, Corsair SP120s. Got two of these. Um, one of these is, or maybe two, I'm going to put on the CPU cooler. Um, maybe. I'm not sure. Because this only comes with one. I may have a push-pull system. I'm not sure. And then I'll mount another one on the case somewhere else just for added airflow. And they weren't that expensive, so I thought they would be a good buy. Uh, I'll just focus back on the rest of the kit. There we go. Okay, uh, next to that, on the top here, the processor, the mainstay of everything. We'll zoom in on that. This is the Intel Core i7 4770K. Uh, Haswell, again, 1150. This is their top of the range processor for the uh, 1150 socket. Uh, however, no, it's not actually. They've just released the i7-4790K, which is a bit more better than this. Uh, but again, this is a really high-end process. This is going to be more than capable of uh, rendering videos and all that stuff that I plan to do with it. So I don't see any problems with that. It should be pretty sweet. Uh, next to that, just a generic uh, DVD drive. This is just an Asus 24-speed uh, DVD drive for... Uh, games and DVDs, that kind of thing. I do plan, you know, I'll watch films on this, that kind of thing, so that'll be good. Uh, down next to that, uh, storage. Now, I did have, not some issues, but some 
ideas about this. I wasn't sure whether to just leave, to stick with the, uh, the SSD. And I thought I may have enough storage on that and then be able to just load things onto an external hard drive once they've been processed. But this wasn't that expensive and I thought, you know, the storage may come in useful. So it's a Western Digital 1 terabyte black uh, drive, 64 megs of cache. Uh, it's a high performance drive, uh, but again, it wasn't that expensive. The uh, the price of these is coming down, especially for the one terabyte versions, which seems like more than enough uh, more than enough space than I'll need. But uh, it's nice to have the extra room anyway. Uh, next to that, here's another couple of aesthetics things. These are just some LEDs. Uh, I'll bring them up closer so you can see them. These are just some LEDs. I've got uh, one's amber and one is white. So. Uh, yeah, I'll, these may not work, but I'll put them in and they might just give a nice look to the case, uh, hopefully. Anyway, moving on. Uh, behind all that, I've got the graphics card. I'll just move these out of the way to show you the graphics card. It is a Sapphire R9270X uh, Radon, Radon series graphics card. Just uh, focus on that. Very nice. I'm looking forward to using this a lot. I should be able to use GPU acceleration in Premiere Pro and uh, After Effects, and this should be pretty good at that. But also for games, I'm hoping to use this for some games. I might uh, start getting the, the typical games you would run on a PC, so Battlefield and whatnot, I may get into that. So that's very nice. And now this is kind of orange, and this is where I'm going for the orange sort of accent in this case so this is why i've got these uh, six pin cables in orange and it's why i've got an amber led so you know it's a kind of i'm gonna have to see what it looks like it may look rubbish and i'll just change it out or i won't use these cables or I won't use the leds but hopefully it won't look too bad so yeah okay lastly the case at the back is the fractal design define r4 uh it's the windowed version as you can see so if you see into it, obviously I wouldn't have all these aesthetic things if you couldn't see into the case. Uh, it's the white windowed version. Uh, this case is very highly recommended. A lot of people use this case. It's got great sound dampening and that'll be good because the computer I'm using now is quite loud. The fans are really crap, really bad quality and they're very loud. So this should be great. Uh, lots of room inside as well. You can move around the drive cages and whatnot. A nice clean look as well you'll see it when i get it out um and i think that's it that's all for the build really um obviously software and whatnot i'll be putting on there but again i'll do that once once the thing's actually built um and we'll start getting into it i think i'll start with doing an outside build so i'll put the motherboard down on uh, the, the motherboard box plug in the power supply put the processor on the ram and just test that everything is working um, but I've got to get everything out of the boxes first, so we'll start with that. Okay, so for this bit, we just need a few things for this out of the case build. Uh, I'll just get into the power supply here and just get a nice get out of the case here. So yeah, all we need here is the power supply. We just need to plug in a few cables. Uh, we need the motherboard, the processor, the RAM. Um, I'm not going to use the liquid cooler on the processor, I'll just use the stock cooler for the time being. Just literally, it's just to test that everything's running and it boots up and we'll need the, uh, the monitor as well. Um, so yeah, just the uh, PSU, which I'll get out. And I haven't opened any of these yet, so I haven't had a look at all this. Some nice documentation there. Here's all the uh, modular cables. It's quite a lot. Uh, yeah, The only one that isn't modular is the 24 pin. Um, the motherboard and the 8 pin supplemental for the motherboard which makes sense because you're always going to need them so why you know why wouldn't they be already on you know fully modular fully modular PSUs don't seem to make sense for that reason and some cables plugging it in the back of the case when we get to that so I'll just get that box out of the way all right this is looking very nice again I haven't opened these at all so this is the first time uh, seeing all these parts for the first time there, let's get rid of that. Looking very nice indeed. Nice big fan on the top to keep it nice and cool. Well, that's not really loud as well. Um, apologies if you hear something in the background. I've got the football on at the minute. Uh, Belgium are playing USA and I've got some money on Belgium uh, in a sweepstake. So I'm hoping they win. So it's just on in the background. I just want to just want to see how they do. But uh, 
yeah, apologies if you uh, if you hear me scream when they score, which they obviously will. Uh, yeah. Right, let's just unplug that, get all these things out of the way. Uh, okay, I don't need these. Just leave them. And we'll get the motherboard out. Now, again, this is something... Um, motherboards, or to be honest, whenever you're working with any components for PCs, there is a, sh a risk of static electricity building up and you uh, causing damage to your components by... Uh, shorting out things when you touch them with your hands because you build up static, static electricity. Now the best way to solve that is to wear these bands that you can get that uh, will connect to something metal like the case for example. Um, this is just all the stuff from the motherboard by the way. Um, but you can just touch the case if you touch it uh, now and then it'll uh, discharge the uh, electricity from your, your body sort of thing and uh, I've got the case down the bottom here, so I'll just touch that every now and then just to, uh, to make sure I'm not going to cause any damage. Let me get the motherboard out there. So we'll just pull all these back. You don't need any of these for this bit. Uh, I may need the manual actually just to tell where to put the RAM in which which dims because it's important. Uh, you can't just put them in any one. Very nice looking motherboard. I'm looking forward to using this. It's uh, fab. There we go. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, actually, I will need the motherboard box. Sorry, that's my plan to keep it off any uh, anywhere that it's going to get shocked. You know, this is cardboard. It's not. Uh, it's not going to conduct any electricity. So we've got the motherboard on the box there. This will be perfect for that. Um, and we'll get the CPU and the RAM out next. I'll just change the angle so you can see me install the CPU and the RAM a bit better. Okay, here's the close-up of the motherboard. Uh, I've got the uh, CPU and whatnot out of its box. Um, I'm just going to take off this uh, this cover here. So you just lift up this bracket here like this, and you can just pull that up, and you can just pull this cover off like so. That's just for protection to protect uh, the pins, because these are all tiny little pins. And on the CPU, which is just in its case here, they're all tiny little gold contacts that the pins must touch. Uh, and that's how the CPU makes contact with the motherboard. But uh, it's very easy to bend these pins. And if you bend any of them, uh, say goodbye to your processor or motherboard rather, because uh, it's quite likely that it won't work. Um, I haven't done this that many times, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I know how to do it. So we've got the processor here, tiny little processor, let me just try and focus on that, oh, wrong way. There we go, you can see the pair, the contacts, the gold contacts there, you don't want to touch those. Uh, okay, let's focus back on the motherboard. Right, now, there's a tiny little gold arrow on one side of this processor, which is this side, I don't know if you can see it, I don't think you can, there you go, little gold right on the corner there. And there is a co gold corner on the motherboard as well, that corresponds to where you should put this. So I'm just going to look for that. I can't see it. Actually, is it on? Ah, yes, it's on here. So there's a little gold. Well, it's not gold, just an impression of an arrow there. So I can see I need it to go in this orientation. So I'll just lift that back up. And you just want to drop it in very carefully. Like so. That's it. Don't really want to touch it. You just want to make sure it's in. That's it. Then you bring down the bracket. Now this, people always say this seems like you're going to break it because you need to apply a lot of pressure. And this doesn't seem right, but you've got to do it all the way down and you lock it under there like that. And that's it. That's the CPU installed. Dead simple. Uh, the cooler is also just as simple. Uh, again, I'm just going to use the stock cooler for this. Um, if I can get the pin out. Okay, this is the cooler. See there, this is just a basic uh, Intel cooler. You get this with all their processors. To be honest, it is, you know, they wouldn't include it if it wasn't necessary. Uh, well, if it wasn't uh, powerful enough. But if you're overclocking, which I plan to, then it's not really good enough, to be honest. So that's why I have the, uh, the water cooler as well. And to put this on, this is also very simple. You can see there's four plugs here. 
on each side and they just go into these ports on the motherboard here I'll have to put a backplate on for the uh, water cooler but this is fairly simple so you just put this on like so and I think you just press these down I've not actually there you go and that clicks down and that's it that's the CPU cooler installed and then there's a plug for that which goes in the top corner here I'll just rotate the motherboard around so you can see there is a four pin header here if you can just see that and the CPU cooler goes into there like so and that's it that's it for the cooler uh, if you just install the stock cooler that will be it fairly straightforward okay we'll put the RAM in now uh, I'll leave it like that so you can see I'll just get the sticks out and the RAM here is also dead simple to uh, to plug in um, I'm just going to reference the manual actually just to find out which uh, sockets I need to put that in so I'll just I'll be back in a second okay I just referenced the manual to see which slots I need to be putting this memory in uh, you'll always need to do that because you never know you know they are color coded but you never know which slots the memory has to go in and just need to reference the manual um, okay so I found out it's these two gray slots here one and three so first of all pretty simple you just need to pull back these little clips that hold the memory into place so just on one and three and then you get the memory like here and you can see that one side is slightly longer than the other side and there's a little notch in, in the middle there and you line that up with the correct slot and you just put it straight in so line that up like so you have to press down usually it's not that hard but until it clicks into place that's it you click in that's it installed pretty simple I'll do the same with this one like so and then press it down until it clicks and there we go that's the memory installed dead simple dead straightforward he's just singing along okay now i just need to connect the power supply and the monitor and then i'll be able to do a check to see if uh if it'll um boot up and that everything's running okay so i'll change angle again for that Okay, so I've got the power supply set up with the motherboard and like before I'm installed the CPU and the RAM and I've got the monitor connected up. It's the first time seeing the monitor as well. It's looking very nice. And all I need to do now is just short out the two power connectors on the motherboard which will start up the power supply and it will start the system. And on the monitor we should get some activity and it should say uh, select boot device which means it's booted okay. You'll get that little beep. Uh, or maybe not actually because we haven't got that connected to the motherboard but anyway that will say that it's booting okay and there's no problems and then we can continue and we can install it into the case let's start with that so I'll just short out the two power connectors okay maybe I need to turn the power supply on that would probably help there we go so there's the power supply come on there's some LEDs on that it looks pretty good actually uh, also the motherboard there we go and now we're just waiting for something on the monitor which there is nothing yet but there we go there you go no bootable devices detected system will enter the BIOS setup utility there you go so it's booted okay and um, everything seems to be working fine we'll just turn it off now and then we can get started with uh, getting it all in the case yeah, we've just got the case here. I've just got it out of its box. It's pretty uh, enormous. Might not look that big on the video, but uh, yeah, it's pretty sizable. I can just put uh, my hand up against it here. It's a lot bigger than my other case. It's heavy as well, but it's, it seems really good quality. Um, I'm looking forward to getting things in it. Uh, I think first we'll maybe put some of the, uh, the peripherals in. So the DVD drive and... Uh, maybe the power supply and maybe a hard drive as well um but we'll see uh, i'll get started on that now here's a look at the inside of the case i've taken both the side panels off i'll just show you those they're really top quality um here's the back side panel it's got this noise dampening material on here so it keeps everything nice and quiet inside uh, that's yeah the back panel and then there is the windowed panel which is going on this, this side so here the window panel it's just got some clear plastic on at the minute i'll take that off so that's how that goes on you can see in uh, into the case so that's looking pretty good i think 
Uh, like I said, first thing, I think I'll get a DVD drive just in the top because that just needs to go in. And once that's in, I can just leave that and deal with it later on when I start doing the cabling. Um, these drives, you can remove them. So I think I'm going to do that because I'm not going to have that many drives. These are pretty tight screws. Um, ooh, yeah, it's tight. Of good quality. So you can take these out, put them elsewhere. And I believe you can just, there you go, you can just pull the drive out. So you've got a drive cage there. Uh, to give more room, I may need more room anyway for the uh, the graphics card, um, but I don't. I won't need all of these these uh, these uh, spaces for the drives. So, you know, I may not even use that. Oh, you can put it in sideways, like that. You can, you know, you can have them going in that way. It's it's very it's very good for that. And it's another reason why I bought this case. It's very flexible. You can change things around, and the uh, drives themselves are very straightforward. You just uh, pull them out like this. That's it. You install whatever, your SSD, your hard drive, onto there with a few screws, and then you just slot it back in, and clicks into place, and that's it. Uh, dead straightforward. Uh, so yeah, I'll get on with putting in the CD drive, and uh, then maybe the motherboard. Okay, I've got a screwdriver, because I needed one. Uh, I can't believe I didn't use one. That's about the only thing you need in a computer build, and I didn't have one. So I'm just going to get the CD drive installed. Stick these thumb screws in. Don't need to be that tight. Hold them. And then there's just two on the other side, but I don't need to video that. Just to give you an idea of how it all goes together. Just pop this one out. Uh, okay, and I'll just do the two on the other side as well, and then we'll move on. Okay, that's the CD drive in. It's pretty simple, fairly basic. Uh, there was a fan on the back, on this plate here, that came with, uh, it was installed when I got the case, and I opened it up. It's a 140mm fan, uh, but I have these other two Corsair fans that I showed you uh, earlier on, and I think what I might do is put a Corsair fan on the back here, and there's some room on the front here. There's, there's a 140 fan here and there's another space for another 140 fan. So I may put this other fan there as well. So uh, that would give nice cooling onto the graphics card here. Um, so I think I'll do that. Uh, I'm gonna install that now, I think, just quickly. And then I believe it'll be time to get the motherboard in. Or I uh, may put in the power supply on the bottom as well. Um, get the things sort of that need to be in and out of the way quickly. And then I'll start on some of the uh, the other parts as well. Okay, as so you can see, I've fitted that 140mm fan in the top, uh, in the front rather. So you've got two 140mm fans here on the connectors. They should be able to make their way onto the motherboard somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure. There's a couple of fan controllers here as well that I can link them to. But that'll create some nice airflow over the GPU, which will be pretty good. So uh, I'm happy with that setup. Okay, so I'm going to put the PSU in uh, now, this time. Uh, so you've got the picture of the back there, and I'm just going to feed through these cables uh, through here. Uh, no, sorry, that's wrong. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to put the PSU in. Okay, so it just sits on the bottom here. There's a couple of risers that uh, are good for uh, keeping keeping it nice and uh, quiet. Uh, they reduce any vibration, that kind of thing. And that's it. You just line it up with the back there. I'll just come around here. Uh, these cables, I'll feed them in through the grommets uh, in the back there. I know usually you'd have the fan uh, on the bottom drawing in cooler air, but uh, to be honest, I don't think the system's going to get hot. And it's got nice LEDs on there, so I, I like the sort of the sign there. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, I'll just take a camera off the tripod and show you a bit better. Uh, yeah, so you can see there. I think I like the fan better there. Uh, I like the logo and whatnot. And the little LEDs, and it'll be drawing air off the GPU. But that shouldn't be hot, to be honest, because it's going to have this air coming from this front fan, uh, keeping it cool as well. So, but then again, if it is too much, I can switch it out and turn it the other way around if it's too bad. Uh, and simply to install this, you just need four screws in the back in those four corners there, dead straightforward. So, I'm just going to get that installed now. Okay, next up I'm going to install the motherboard, but before that you need to put motherboard standoffs into the case and there's loads of different holes because you can have an ADX size motherboard in here, you can put a micro ADX board in, it's, it's entirely up to you. 
Uh, but they are numbered, well not numbered, there are, uh, there's letters on them which show where the ATX screws go and where the micro ATX screws go. So I'm just going to put these standoffs in first. Uh, they are just so that the motherboard isn't actually touching the metal, because if it was touching the metal, you turn it on and it would short out and you might damage your components. So that's what these are for. And then screws go through the motherboard into these to keep it raised. Uh, these are brass, so not conductive. Um, it raised off the tray so I'll just go ahead and install these and then I'll get the motherboard in okay I've got the uh, motherboard standoffs in uh, they took a bit of time actually uh, the screw threads were really tight I had to use a, a socket set to get them in and down here I don't know if you can see no, you can't the power supply's in the way but anyway there's one missing so that's a bit of a that's a bit shit with the case uh, you should get nine there was nine that go in the board and there was only eight, so that's no good, but never mind. Uh, not the end of the world, I suppose. Um, I've just missed out this one in the middle, but there should be enough support on the ones at either side, so that shouldn't really be a problem. So I'll just move that out of the way. And uh, the first thing is the I.O. shield. So this goes in the back there, and so the, the motherboard lines up to that and the parts go in. So I'm just going to fit this in first. That's the I.O. shield in, I'm now going to drop in the motherboard. Remember, I've, I've left the RAM on and the processor because, uh, you know, you don't need to take them off. So I'm just going to slot it in here now. Uh, you need to be careful with this. You know, you don't want to damage anything. But you just basically line it up with the ports, drop it in, line it up with the standoffs. Uh, it should be... You need to push it through the actual port. Um, it's a bit fiddly sometimes. But you just need to give it a bit of a force and it should go in. Over there. All right. I think I think I need to take the covers off these uh, these inputs at the back. So I'll just do that first. I think that might be stopping it. Just these little covers here. Let's take them off. Right, it should go in now. Let's hope. Right. Try again. You got to be careful with this. You know, you don't want to force it too much, and I mean, you can damage your puzzle quite easily. There we go. That's better. So that's fit nicely and lined up with the uh, mountain screws very nicely as well. So that's the board in and then we're just going to get some screws and mount them to the uh, the standoffs. Okay, I'm going to install the CPU cooler again now. So I'm going to install the actual cooler. Uh, I've just got it here. It's a bit of a beast. Uh, try and get this on here. We just need to put this on over the top of there. This is it down onto the hard drive, uh, the hard drive, the processor, like so. so. That's it. And then you just want to screw them down. So there's four thumb screws to screw it down with. So I'll just get them and screw it down uh, like so. Do it lightly initially. So just to place it as well, you need to get it nice and sort of steady. Uh, I think it's going to be about in the middle, really. Uh, so I'll just get the screws on. Okay, so you can see I've got the CPU cooler in now. It took some doing. Um, I've got this fan, these ones that I bought, the SP120 on here, and I've got the radiator behind that mounted on with screws from the other side. And there's some padding here for noise dampening, so it should be nice and quiet. And it should go around that way and blow hot air from the radiator away. Got two plugs here, two three pin plugs for the uh, to plug into the motherboard. Um, so I'm just going to get them done. That, that's gone in quite nicely, quite easily. I'm quite happy about that. Uh, I think next I'm going to plug in some of the hard drives, so the SSD and the HDD probably in these two drives. Okay, so next up I'm just going to put uh, the hard drives onto the hard drive trays. So I've got the SSD here, so you just it's four screws on the bottom here. Be fairly straightforward. Yeah, just put them in like so. And get them in. 
I'm taking ages because I'm watching this football match because it's intense. It's really, uh, it's really getting going, which is good. So that's one screw in there, and then just three more in, and that'll be that done. And then it's pretty much the same with a hard drive. So the screws just go into here, 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 and here, and then you slot them back in there. So that's the hard drives uh, in their little slots. So I'm just going to put them back into the cage there. Just on that. So this is a dead good system. This you just uh, slot them in. So you've got the port at the back. So you just slot them in like so. And click in. And that's it. And the same with the SSD down the bottom. Uh, there you go. And that's it. Done. That's the drives. Uh, that's the drives in. Uh, just uh, I put this other fan because I had these two SB120 fans. So I've got the one in the top corner with the cooler there. And the one on the bottom here, so that's going to go around and extract more warm air that will be coming off the GPU and uh, put it down through here and out the sides at the bottom. Um, that just fit in there quite nicely, I thought that, that would be a good effect. There's a couple of spaces on the top of the case, but they've got dampening on and I might just leave them there. Um, I think they'll do fine, so that's in a good position there, I think. Okay, uh, most of the things are in now. Uh, like I said, I just installed that fan in the bottom there. So you've got the hard drives here, you've got two fans on the front, put the DVD drive on the top, the motherboard, the RAM, the processor, the cooler, the PSU. The only other main component to put in is the GPU. And uh, I'm stealing a sound card and a wireless card from my old computer, but I won't be putting those in now. So because the GPU will uh, take up a lot of room, I think what I'm going to do now is get started on the cabling so get everything cabled up uh, and then just leave the last couple of cables uh, for the GPU and then put that in last so hopefully everything will be nice and tidy the uh, the next clip uh, when I get all the cabling done so here you can see on the back I've just finished pretty much everything and um, I've got the graphics card in but I'll show you a front view of that but you can see here on the back all the cable management so I've got as much as I can tied down, it should be enough space. There is quite a lot of space here between the behind the motherboard tray, and the side panel should go on with relative ease. I've just got these LEDs here at the bottom. You can see um, I haven't put them in place yet because I'm going to start it up, um, get them lit, and then place them in places where I think they might look good, and then finally get them stuck down. Um, the last thing to install is. The sound card and the wireless card from the other computer but I'll need to get them at some point I may get them tomorrow Um, I don't need it right now so I may just do a boot to see if it all works but I'll show you the front first okay here's the front everything finally in place everything up there the new stuff the GPU obviously uh, with the orange connectors there I know they're not the same kind of orange as the actual card but Maybe with the amber lighting they might look okay. Um, hard drives, all the cable management done there. I think it looks quite neat, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, yeah, that's it pretty much done, to be honest. Like I said, just the sound card and the wireless card to go in these bottom lanes down here. And I need to take off a few stickers and whatnot uh, from the cards. But uh, it's pretty much done. It's been quite a mesh. It's about uh, nearly half past one in the morning. Been on it a good few hours now. I didn't think it would take quite this long, but uh, I guess you've got to give time for that. So I'll connect it up to the monitor, uh, up to the power, um, and get it started and then place those LEDs. Okay, everything's in. I've connected it up to the monitor and it's to the mains. So moment of truth, just to turn it on now, see if everything works. So here we go. And... And it works. Everything is on, which is good. Uh, lots of lights, which is nice. The LEDs are working. I'm just going to uh, position them. Oh, shit. Uh, position them in somewhere to go. But uh, that's good. It's booting up. There we go. There's the thing on the monitor. So everything's working. It's all lighting up. Everything's good. All right. I'm going to place the LEDs and then I'll do another video.